Hi there, and welcome to this video about upgrading from SharePoint DIN model UI extensions to the new and modern SharePoint framework extensions. Just to set the context, in the SharePoint DIN model, we used to create the so-called UI extensions, which were useful to add additional commands to the command bar of a list or of a library in SharePoint, as well as to extend the ECB or Edit Control Block menu uh, with custom items, again, for a list item or a document in a document library. With SharePoint Framework, nowadays, in the modern UI, we can create uh, extensions of type list view command set, which are really powerful and can rely on React, on the Fluent UI and on the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Just to give you an idea, this is a use case of an extension, a UI extension, built in the classic UI on the left side and on top of it you can see how it behaves a list view command set built with SharePoint Framework, with MGT and React. As you can see, the UI is really more and better if compared to the classic one. How can you do that in your own solutions? Well, there is no conversion tool, so you will have to create a new SharePoint Framework solution of type extension and you will have to choose to create a list view command set. Then you will need to replace uh, the client-side code built with JavaScript that you created in your old SharePoint add-in model extension with new TypeScript code, which will rely on the SharePoint Framework development model and eventually will rely on the SharePoint Framework dialog framework and on Fluent UI and Microsoft Graph Toolkit to build a better looking UI experience for your end users. So, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how you can do this transition in practice. Let's say that you want to implement a custom command for a document or a list item in a library or a list. So, for example, you want the user to be able to select a target item, click on a command in the command bar and see a dialog with some custom information, like, for example, right here we see details about the selected document. How can you implement such kind of functionality using SharePoint Framework and the modern development? Well, first of all, you will need, like always, to use the Human Generator for SharePoint Framework in order to create a SharePoint Framework solution. The name of the solution could be whatever you like. It will have to be an extension and the extension will need to be a list view command set type of extension. As the name of the extension, you could use, for example, document details. It will start the scaffolding of the solution. It will take a while and it will create all of the source code reference files as well as it will import all the NPM packages needed by the solution. And just to save some time, I will fade out and fade in waiting for the packages to install. And here the solution is fully scaffolded. Now, before opening with Visual Studio Code the source code of the solution, we need to add some additional NPM packages. For example, I am going to use React and the Microsoft Graph Toolkit as a set of React components. So I'm going to install MGT for SharePoint Framework as well as MGT for React and the React and React DOM components. I'm also going to save those packages in the package.json file of the solution. Once they will be installed, I will also install the types for React and React DOM, saving the packages in the package.json file under the dev dependencies section. And now that the packages are ready, let me install also the types for those packages. And once I've done that, we are ready to open the solution in Visual Studio Code. And here we are. So code dot, and let's see what we have got generated by the scaffolding tool. Well, first of all, we have on the resource folder, the extension subfolder and the document details subfolder, which implements the actual uh, uh, extension we want to dig into. If I open the TypeScript file for the extension, we can see that we have a file which defines a class, a document details command set, which inherits from base list view command set of T, where T is uh, the type of the interface defining uh, the uh, configuration settings for the command set. 
in the on init method of the command set we simply have the logic to try to get one sample command in the command bar or in the extended uh, ECB menu of the selected item and to hide it as well as we have the registration of an event in case of any changes in the target list. This command one key that we see right here is defined in the manifest of the command set where we can see that this extension is an extension of type list view command set and we have a list of items which will define all of the commands that we want to make available to the end user. For each command we can have a title which will be the string the users will see in the UI as well as an icon which can be an explicit file or can be an encoded base64 of an image just to avoid having a dependency on a file and this one is always command. So back to the source code here we say that on list view state changed so whenever the user will interact with the list view and will select something we will simply see if we need to activate or deactivate or enable or disable one of the commands so here we try to get our common one and eventually we will make it visible if the number of selected items is just one then when the user will click on any of the selected command the on execute function will be triggered and in there we will get an event object in the item ID of the event we will be able to see what the command selected by the user is and we will be able to do our custom logic to implement our own custom logic to handle the event. Now in a real solution which I have already created we can do something like that so let me switch to the solution that I showed you before here we still have the extension is like as before but in the manifest file we just have one item the doc details item this is the description and the label that the user will see in the UI and this is the base64 encoded PNG of the icon that I want to use for my command and then in the command set I have the same logic as before in the on init I have the logic to disable the doc details by default but I also have the initialization code of the Microsoft Graph toolkit if you don't know about MGT you can find in the links in this video additional details about how to dig into developing solution with MGT Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Here I simply register MGT to use SharePoint so that it will rely on the SharePoint security context to access Microsoft Graph under the cover. Then I have the same logic as before on the on list view state changed and on list view state changed if a one item is selected I will enable a button. Then in the doc details when on execute of the doc details I will simply retrieve from the context of SharePoint Framework some information about the selected item and about the site and the tenant in which I am so that later on I can create a React component which will actually render the dialog on the window and I can simply show that uh, dialog window. In fact, I rely on a custom function that I created, show document details dialog. I provide all of the information about the selected item and as you can see here I can get through the event, the selected rows, and I can get the selected item in the array of selected rows. It's an array in case you have multiple selected items and I can then get information about the item URL, about the item ID and stuff like that. So the show document details dialog will simply create a new instance of a document dialog React component and show it on the screen. There is an article in this series of articles about how to create dialog windows with SharePoint Framework, but just for the sake of uh, uh, completeness, the dialog itself uh, is inheriting from the base dialog of the SharePoint Framework dialog framework. In the constructor, I get all of the settings about the selected document, and then I render a document details dialog content which is a React component defined right here as you can see it extends react.component and in the render method of this React component I simply render a dialog content from Office UI Fabric or Fluent UI and here I render the file control from MGT so that this control with the site ID and the drive ID and the item ID will do the actual rendering of the information panel about the selected file. If you want to run the solution, gulp serve, you will be brought to the browser and from there you will be able to play with it.
Here you can find additional links if you want to dig into the topics that we covered in this video. And like always, thank you for watching this video. Thank you.